My name is Eva. Thank you guys for coming. I really appreciate you guys coming to see me speak. Um, I want to I wanna thank Mike Jones for believing in me and the Creative South team for providing me this opportunity to share my story with you guys to help inspire you the same way I was inspired when I came to Creative South last year. I'm an alternative designer and a strong believer in the design thinking philosophy, which entails that design is not just about making things look pretty, it's about the process of creating an excellent user experience, which naturally means that I have a passion for UI UX. A lot has happened to me in the last year. I finally graduated with a bachelor's degree in design. It's taken me 10 years. <laughs> I had a baby, he's nine weeks old. And I moved from Florida to California to pursue my husband and I's dream. <laughs> I see some Californians here. But the most important and the most valuable accomplishment that I did last year was I was able to get my first full-time position in the field that I love so much right out of school. Um, I was one of the students that came to Creative South last year from UCF. <laughs> and I came to Creative South looking for answers. Uh, I really wanted to know how to get my first job because being in school for such a long time I was really nervous approaching graduation. Everybody was talking about how hard it is to get your first job. So I came, I came to Creative South looking for answers and I, I listened to the speakers and I was so inspired about their stories and their struggles and their failures and their success. And, but the question was, okay, how did you get your first start but didn't get answered for me? So, I didn't realize it then, but I was already taking those steps to accomplish that goal. And by the time graduation came about, I had not just one, but three job offers. Two of them were very well respected companies. Today I'm going to talk to you guys about how I made that happen, and how you guys can do it too, and then once you get that job, what do you do? So the. When I, spoke, when I talked to everybody at um, Creative South last year, they gave me this advice. They said, you need four things. You need an education, experience, a targeted portfolio, and online and real world presence. The thing is, even though we know that, the thing is, nobody really explained to me how. So today I'm going to talk to you guys about the how, because it's not as simple as one, two, three. It's more like one, A, B, C, D. And in the last four years, any decision I made answered yes to this question. Is this decision going to make me stand out? Because if I don't stand out, then my application is just going to get lost between everybody else's applications. So let me start with education. And education could be formal or informal, and I decided to do both. I mean, it's taken me 10 years, so. Um, why should you get a formal education? In 2005, I started my design education career, and I studied architecture for five years at three different universities in two different countries, and then the housing market crashed. So I switched to graphic design at a fourth university. And people might ask me, why get a formal education? because you really don't need a formal education to um, have a career in graphic design. The reason is my grandma, I, I inherited this gene from her called um, stubbornness, and um, my grandma, <laughs> she grew up in a third world country where education wasn't provided to her. And when the opportunity presented itself, she learned how to read and write in her 60s, and she learned how to drive in her 70s, so I had to make sure I did everything in my power to get my education, especially living in a first world country. So did a formal education make me stand out? Absolutely, I ended up studying multiple disciplines of design. Is a formal education going to make you guys stand out? Absolutely. 
Because to train your eye, you need the mentorship of professional educators. That's a skill you get through experience of trial and error or through a formal education. Because being able to design will get you the job. But being able to communicate your ideas into a room full of clients and prospective employers is how you grow and you stand out as a designer. But an, edu an education is not enough. You need to kind of kick it up a notch. So you need to learn how to learn. To do that, you got to take things into your own hands. So whenever I find myself um, not inspired, I try to find um, inspiration in different places. I actually, I actually don't have that much time. I, I have three, technically three jobs. I'm a full-time interactive designer at CBS Local. I'm a full-time mom for two kids and a full-time wife. And for those of you who are married, you know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> so time is not a luxury for me. So I try to spend it wisely and, and I, I try to spend it very carefully on Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> But not just anything on Netflix. I like to watch documentaries, and when I'm not feeling inspired, I like to watch documentaries about science and, and history and fashion. <laughs> so, my commute to work is extremely long. I mean, for those of you who are living in California, even though I live 15 miles away from work, it takes me about 45 minutes to get to work, and 45, um, uh, an hour to an hour and 15 minutes coming back. So I take advantage of that time because I feel like if I'm not doing two things at once, then I'm wasting valuable time that I could be nourishing my brain. So I love listening to podcasts and I love listening to audiobooks. And I also realize that my local library provides online um, courses that I can use to educate myself informally. The purpose of getting an informal education is basically to be able to um, build your knowledge. That way you can hold an intellectual conversation and get out of your shell when you're meeting new people. So not having enough time is a problem for me because I have a five-year-old son. And it breaks my heart when I can't spend time with him because if you guys have children, and you have conversations with them, you realize that their minds have no boundaries. They're not limited to any type of thinking. So, I, I like to take advantage of that. I mean, we just watched the, the, um, the last Star Wars movie, and it was the first time I've watched any Star Wars movie. Please don't judge. <laughs> <laughs> and my son, I was having this conversation with myself, I tend to do that, I talk out loud, and I was just wondering, <laughs> Kylo Ren was having this struggle about darkness and like being good or dark, and I, and I was just simply wondering, what made Darth Vader dark? And my son so casually interrupts me, and he says, maybe he spent too much time in the sun. <laughs> That's such a valid answer, it's just from a completely point, different point of view. So I needed to figure out how to spend time with my son. I mean, my son, children in general, like, they have, I have access to his brain, so why not take advantage of that? So I needed to learn how to multitask creatively, and I started putting him in my projects. So this is a project that I worked on for downtown Orlando, and we had to create artwork to put on the, um, the electric boxes downtown to prevent tagging. And this is when I discovered my son's artistic talents. And he loves to draw. I, I like to give him all the tools to, to let him access his creativity. So he draws and paints. And, and I noticed that he kept repeating certain shapes and patterns. And I started asking him, Mom, what is this? And he would tell me the same exact story, even if I would ask him about the same piece 
weeks later, and to me it just looks like a bunch of scribbles. So I created this book just to try and study him, because I thought that that was crazy, you know? And I described what he would tell me his scribbles are. I mean, that looks like Spider-Man to me now. <laughs> So once you learn how to multitask creatively and using your time wisely, you become an expert learner. But an education is not enough to get your job. You really need experience. The problem with experience is it's kind of a catch-22. I mean, you really need experience to get a job. To get a job, you need to get experience. And that's a problem. But so I thought. So how do you get experience? I came to the United States when I was 18 years old, and I'm from overseas, I'm from Jordan. And when you're studying, there isn't really a need for you to um, work. So I came to the US, and by the time I was starting to look for work, I was already 23, and I had nothing on my resume. I was studying architecture, and I needed to intern, and nobody would give me that opportunity. So. I called my dad up, and I was going to go visit them in Jordan that summer, and I told him, Dad, I would like to come intern for your company. I was totally trying to take advantage of him. <laughs> and he knew that, because he didn't say yes. He basically said, uh, yeah, just come, honey, we'll see what happens. But I didn't wait for him to say yes. I basically started tagging along and going to the company with him, and at that time, his company had merged with another one from Qatar, and they were looking to create a, a, a combined portfolio, and I slowly took over that project. I'm sure most of you guys know going to people's servers to look for their projects is not fun, and that's basically why they let me do this, because I had to go through their unorganized <laughs> files to look for the things that they needed, and all I got was create this portfolio. But I made sure to ask all the right questions. I made sure to do everything that I can to get this done. And even though it took more time than it would have, I got it done. This is one of the pages that I created for them. They loved it so much that they ended up paying me for it. I didn't even ask. So don't be afraid to ask for the opportunity that you're looking for. When I was trying to get into architecture school, I needed to take the GRE test because the school I was going to, um, University of South Florida, had a master's program without, where you didn't need to take a bachelor's program. But English is my second language, so the GRE test is English and math, and I needed to expand my vocabulary and I had two options, either study words and their meanings, which as a creative I was not going to do, so um, the other option was to start reading. So I started reading so much, I was finishing one or two books a week, but I was reading a young adult genre, and I needed an outlet to put this genre, uh, to put my thoughts about what I was reading because the ideas were so inspiring. It's a book like The Hunger Games, I'm sure you guys know, and Twilight. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I created an online magazine that turned into an online magazine with five writers that turned into an online magazine that had connections with publishers like Simon & Schuster and HarperCollins and some international publishers like Harlequin where they would send me advanced copies of their books six months in advance for me to review. But I miss being creative, so I would see these book covers and I, I was just so inspired by the work that they do that I wanted to pick their brain. So I took, the, I took advantage of the fact that I had those connections and I started interviewing their, their people. I started interviewing the, the cover artists and the photographers. And I came across, across this photographer, his name is Dan Mumford, who inspired this book cover, which inspired my social media icon. And practicing this technique got me to find 
the way that I like to design, which is using geometry and line. And it combined my love for architecture with my love with graphic design. And my magazine opened up so many opportunities for me. Being able to um, create my own thing allowed me to intern at Orlando Style Magazine, and that opened up an opportunity. I had enough experience to be able to intern at Universal Studios. And then after that, I got my first part-time position as a designer at the University of Central Florida, where I got to work with agencies like Homecoming and the Campus Activities Board, where I got to design posters for movies like The Hunger Games. This is the last piece that I've created. I haven't done illustrations in a long time. Well, I'm a user experience designer and user interface designer. And to learn more about what my name means, I, I would recommend that you go and you listen to the podcast. And this is the piece that Jason asked me to design for the intro page, and I just couldn't wait to do it. And it just solidified the fact that I love this type of illustration. This is my team design group. This is my team. Um, I worked at UCF for about a year in the Office of Student Involvement, and I learned so much from the people around me. You can't just learn from books. You really need to talk to people and see what their strengths are. I made sure when I was working at that job, any time I took on any project, that I was doing it in a technique that I didn't know how to do. So I was spending a little bit more time on it, but it was worth it because I was learning something new. So pursue your passion. The pieces I was creating were great for my portfolio, but I was still in school and the pieces that I had competed with 55 other students. So I needed to create a, to create a unique portfolio that is unique to myself. And I also needed to create a targeted portfolio because all of my pieces were print related. So I created my own projects. I wanted to pursue a career in the digital world, so I started to create my own project. I created um, this project <coughs> called Rent the Bag, which was inspired by Rent the Runway. And the reason I use Rent the Runway because I was looking for a case study that I can explore on my own and, and test new things. But then that led me to my love for interaction and seeing how people interact with the different buttons that we um, provide for them. Last year, the Apple Watch came out. You guys have some? <laughs> yeah, and um, when I decided to do this project, not many people had um, designs for Apple Watches, and the idea was, I'm going to put an Apple Watch in my portfolio because not, not that many people had it. But I didn't know what an Apple Watch did because it wasn't out yet, so I just started imagining what it would look like based on my knowledge for Apple. I did the first design that was based off of their calendar, app, their, um, their weather app, and then I created my own project where you were able to write the date that you were looking to see what your appointments are, are on, and then that would automatically take you to that date and shows you your appointments. And I was trying to draw strength from the idea that you can touch screen onto the watch. The next project I worked on was a collaboration and it had <laughs> two points for it. I wanted this project because I wanted something live and I wanted to collaborate with a web developer because it seemed like any time I interviewed, they were looking for that. So I created the girl code. And I was coming to Creative South and I was looking to impress everybody here. So I created a website that was live. And the girl code is basically the girl version of the bro code from How I Met Your Mother. <laughs> so, um, and then type bite, where people would vote for between two, two designs. 
The idea behind the girl code was I got to create phrases and I, I got some the 10 friends to donate their time and design those phrases for me. And they got to compete side by side. And we tested it out. And that, um, what I wanted to do was the winner would end up getting their design screen printed. So I was very lucky that I collaborated with my classmates and my coworkers to get this done. It, it got a lot of success when I came to Creative South because um, I taken the workshop with Rick Messer and I showed it to him. I really was looking for feedback because I really wanted to get that job right at the end of college. And, and he took it and he showed it to Brian and Drew and they gave me such amazing feedback. So take that into consideration. This brings me to presence. You need to have online and real world presence because the reality is you get a job through word through word to mouth, and that's the best way to get one. And I started attending AIGA because of my job at OSI. We went to events like Resolution, where we heard people speak and also got inspired at a smaller scale. We also taken workshops there. So it was very inspiring to just go to these events, but AIGA changed my life because of one thing. They had the AIGA mentorship program. The AIGA mentorship program pairs you with a designer and you have six, six months to basically work on a self-promotional project. And at the end of that self-promotional project, we go, we showcase our work at a show called The Spot Showcase. I got paired with Mark Unger, who is the creative chief officer of PUSH. I was interested in user experience and user interface design. The only other person that was interested in that was um, a friend of mine called Andres, and they both paired us with Mark because Mark was the best person who had the most experience in creating user experiences, live user experiences. So we came across a problem. How do we present ourselves and advertise our skills for user interface and user um, experience, how, how do you do that on a, in a product where you have to give to people later? So instead of just creating a product that we gave to people and hope that they remembered us by it, we wanted to create an experience for them to get that product. So we created four different designs on bottles and instead of just putting those bottles on shelves, we had people work for them. <laughs> So we got them to basically get the bottles from a vending machine. The most question that we got is, how the hell did you guys get a vending machine? But we made it happen. We got a vending machine, and it was amazing because look at people's expressions. I mean, that was priceless. And during that show, I got approached by um, the art director, and <laughs> the art director of a company called Got Chosen. And he asked for me to come and interview for him. And I did. And I got that job. But I declined it because it wasn't the right job for me. So even though you get the job, don't take anything because it needs to be the right environment. That you, you're going to be going there 9 to 5 every day. If it's not the right environment for you, then you shouldn't pursue that. I want to talk to you guys about two online medias that I, I, I think are extremely important because I can talk to you about linked, um, Instagram and Twitter, but I'm pretty sure there's a lot more people who are experienced in advertising them, themselves through that. But LinkedIn is very important. It was very important to get in my next job. And basically, I didn't know how to use LinkedIn. I, I learned how to maximize it. And the way to do that is by always being present and always being active and keeping your profile up to date. <coughs> and then I used this trick where I unlinked from anybody who was not related to the design and I followed all of my idols, which I was so shocked that they would actually link with me. So I'm currently linked with like Debbie Millman and Jessica Walsh. And that provided validation for people that were coming to my profile. 
And one day I got contacted by a recruiter who was looking to hire an Imagineer at Disney. And she asked me to send her a PDF portfolio. And at that point I understood that I understood the importance of a targeted portfolio. So I asked her what are they looking for because I wanted to make sure that I was sending her projects that only related to what they were looking for. Because it didn't matter that I was skilled in digital if they needed print. So I have this thing where I have a layout for um, my portfolio and I just plug and play what I need to put in there. So a, print, a page from a print portfolio would look like this and a page from a digital portfolio would look like that. She asked me to interview two days later and after interviewing with them, I got the position. But it took a few weeks, and at that point, I had already, my husband and I already decided that we were going to move to California to pursue his career, and I had to say no, which really sucked. <laughs> I was the girl who said no to Disney, which I hated, but I had already committed to something else. So I was moving to California, and I wanted to take advantage of the fact that they wanted me, so I reached out to the art director and I asked him, I asked him what made me stand out to you because I'm pretty sure there was a lot of people who applied to this position. And basically he said to me that I really appreciated the fact that you brought in your sketchbook because you eliminated <coughs> the fact that I had to think of how do you take something from sketch to final product. So process was very important for him. So show your process, because you never know. I made it easy on him to make a decision. And that's what made me stand out to him. The second tool I want to talk to you guys about, and this is exactly how I got my current job, is Slack. I was moving to California, and I was leaving behind a community of designers that I worked so hard to build connections and friends with. And I was really sad and I wanted to make sure by the time I got to California that I was already part of something. So I joined their AIGA, joined their Creative Mornings. And before I left Orlando, I had just joined their Orlando Designer Group. So I looked for one and I found the San Diego Digital Designers Slack group, which was perfect for me. And I joined and I, I, I told them my story and they were very welcoming. And a few days later, right after I said no to Disney, this message pops up in the job chat. And right away, I was like, I'm a designer, right here. And that was the end of the story. I mean, he basically I sent him my portfolio and a few weeks later they, I, I got the job. And they were willing to hire me even though I wasn't going to be out there for another month. So I stood out to them. So find your online community. But you got the job, right? What do you do now with it? What I love about my position is the fact that I have a mentor at work. The reason I accepted CBS wasn't just because I was moving to California. I was looking for, for the mentorship because AIGA taught me so much, so I wanted to continue learning. It's very important for me, education, being able to educate myself continuously is extremely important for me, so the reason I took that job was because of the art director. He looked like he would fit the role of a mentor, which he absolutely did. And after I um, got my job, I told them about Creative Mornings. I was telling my, my boss, I was like, would you mind if I go to Creative Mornings you know, in two weeks? Because I really miss Orlando, and I kind of was looking to do the same thing here. And he looked at me, and he was like, what's Creative Mornings? And I was like, how do you not know what Creative Mornings is? <laughs> so I explained to him what Creative Mornings is. He was completely astounded. And we ended up going to Creative Mornings together, the whole team. And this was the first time we went to Creative Mornings. 
And then this is the second time. We went <laughs> so you guys can see how important it is to have that community. My boss ended up going to another company and I saw him at Creative Mornings with his whole entire team and he looked at me and said, this is because of you. Presence is extremely important, but I still think that having your own job is great, but freelancing is great too, because why not? I mean, you can use freelancing to fill the void that you don't have at work. So I freelance for two um, startups in Orlando. One is called Akis, and one is called DIY Fund. If you guys want to learn more about them, there's where you go. <laughs> and I have the case studies up, so feel free to ask me any questions if you guys see anything that you would like to know about. The next thing I would hope that you guys do is continue looking for different web apps that you guys can learn because you never know, they can solve a problem for you. This um, Atomic.io is basically a prototyping tool that allows you to do interaction, interaction um, through their web app. But I wanted to learn this app before I started creating on it, so I just made up this project after New Year's where I wanted to connect with everybody, I was missing everyone that I knew back home, and I created this holiday card, and I used that tool, and it helped me learn how to use it. So look for those programs, because you never know what type of treasure you might find. The last thing I would like you guys to do is to find a passion project. This is a project I've been thinking about doing for the past year, and it's called By Design. And it's inspired also by my time working on the magazine, and basically what it is is me trying to pick people's brain. If you've spoken with me, or if I happen to say hi to you, you know that I love to learn about people's background. That's like one of the most popular questions that I ask, like, where are you from? What's your background? Because I'm not from here, so I, I want to try and find something, you know, to connect with with you. So, I want to learn about people, and I want to learn about their, their backgrounds, and I want to know how does your background influence the way that you design? So this is the project that I'm working on currently. This is not working. <laughs> so take risks and come to Creative South. This is a picture I took last year before I knew I was going to speak. And I took this picture because I said to myself, one day I'll be standing on this stage, not knowing that I'd be standing on the stage a year later. <laughs> come to Creative South and meet people and make those friends, and come prepared. Do type fight, because you never know, you might win third place overall. <laughs> Forgive the look on my face. <laughs> <laughs> you make friends, and you find people in the new area that you live in. And you get inspired by people, and you meet people that give you opportunities. And you make memories. One of the most inspirational quotes that I hold dear to my heart was by Jen Musari last year when she said, make friends, not connections. So I want to leave you guys with this last story. I got married at 18 and I had two years of architecture school under my belt. And when I got married, I had to move to America and I had to start school all over. And everybody around me told me, you're never going to finish school. But I continued my education. Three years later, I had my first son. And they said, well, now you're never going to finish school. But I graduated last year. In May, I got pregnant with my second son. And they said, you're not going to make it to Creative South. But I'm standing right here in front of you guys, trying to inspire you guys. So please, make sure to take matters into your own hands and make your own opportunities. Thank you. <laughs>